Hello, Silver fans. This is T, and you're in the place to be for silver education, acquisition, and entertainment. Hey, the place to be is the Gold Depot North in Griffith, Indiana, and I'm going to be talking to the new manager, Mike. Hey, if you like coin shop videos, be sure to subscribe, and if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Not only does that affect the YouTube algorithm and help this video be seen by more people, but it also personally gives me encouragement to do more. Thank you. T. All righty. Hey, Mike. Uh, thank you for uh, welcoming me to your shop here, the Gold Depot in Griffith, Indiana. Well, thanks for coming out. Oh, my pleasure. Absolutely. And, uh, hey, uh, it's not the easiest place to find I, I, if you punch it in on the address <laughs> on your iPhone. It'll tell everybody how to get here. It's I, I'm on the south side of 45th Street. The light right there, the cross street, is Forest Drive. Okay, well, thanks for clarifying that. I have a feeling that after this video, you, maybe some people will see some stuff in the video that they uh, want to come check out and uh, make their way to your door. So That would be great. Hey, tell me a little bit about this. I, uh, I know Rich, the owner of the Gold Depot, mm -hmm. opened this place. Uh, how long has it been? Uh, this past February was one year. Okay. So it's just over a year old. Okay, and so you're relatively new. And how long have you been managing the shop? I started managing this shop the beginning of the year. So in January, they promoted me from a store a sales associate and eBay worker at the other store in Crown Point to yeah. managing this location by myself. Yeah, and just so my viewers know, especially uh, if you're new to my channel, I've known Mike for a while from the old shop that Rich had, and uh, Mike, you and I even went on a little bit of a ghost hunt together. That, yeah, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> that was. was a lot of fun going in the old jailhouse. Yeah, uh, matter of fact, maybe I'll put a link to that video at the end of this video. Uh, and if anybody's interested in uh, ghosts and orbs and weird stuff at a haunted old, j old jail, uh, they're welcome to check it out. But <laughs> hey, uh, tell me a little bit about the shop. The place is looking fabulous. Uh, how is the uh, traffic flow in here? Are you getting a good uh, number of customers through the door? Within the past couple of months, yes. Uh, traffic has been coming through. People have been hearing more about us, hearing about how we deal uh -huh. and the stuff that we sell, uh -huh. as well as you know the stuff that we buy. Uh -huh. um, inventory's building and clientele is building, and our, our, it, everything's been on the up. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And so when people walk in, what are they looking for? Typically, people are in here to stack silver and gold. Okay. Um, I do get a lot of numismatic guys coming in for silver dollars and other pieces like that. Uh -huh. um, but our main focus is usually um, selling out bullion. Yeah, and uh, we, you've got a great selection today. Those bars are phenomenal. Thank you. And uh, so, and that was after last night's big Wednesday night auction. Yeah. It's amazing that you still have uh, such good stuff in here. Um, as we had far, a really good show last night. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and. I'll put the link to the Facebook page mm -hmm. down in my video description in case anybody's interested in participating in the Wednesday night auctions uh, yeah. from the Gold Depot. And you and Rich put those on. And Yeah, sometimes you get some crazy deals depending on how we're feeling that night. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Uh, how about gold? Uh, what's been more popular, silver or gold? Um, I'd say it was predominantly silver for a while. For a while. Uh -huh. um, typically the new stackers are coming in purchasing silver because they're freshly getting into the game and I understand that just like I did myself. Uh -huh. But I myself have reached a point where I'm comfortable with the amount of silver that I have stacked yeah. and I've changed my tactic towards gold because uh -huh. I feel when we see these spikes in the future that are going to most likely happen that I think gold may reach a point where it's almost unaffordable for the average person. Uh -huh. I myself can't go out and buy an ounce of gold every month but I can buy a gram or a tenth ounce or just I'm a big fan of fractional gold. Yeah. So I think a lot of people have switched their tactic instead of buying stacks of silver every month they're buying little bits of gold at a time uh -huh. so it's been harder and harder to keep the fractional gold in stock as well uh, that makes sense yeah makes I, sense. I mean we were uh, I'd say a couple months ago it was generic silver ounces every day slinging those out people were coming in couldn't keep them in stock same with the 90% silver mm -hmm. but those same people are coming back more now and now and buying 10 ounces of gold instead of you know 10 ounces of silver uh -huh. so I've kind of been doing the same, mixing it up a little bit, and uh, I think that's a good thing to have a diverse stack. But back to stacking, 
Uh, how long? You, I mean, I don't know your age, but you mm -hmm. seem like a relatively young dude. Mm -hmm. uh, how long have you been stacking, and how'd you get into it? I'm 34. I've been stacking for probably going on four or five years now. Okay. Um, I got into it when my grandpa left me an inheritance of silver coins and silver bars that I know he bought way back for dollars or less on the uh -huh. ounce. You know, yeah. you know, I was able to get myself a leg up in life uh -huh. thanks to grandpa's savings. Uh -huh. and buy myself a nice vehicle and do things for my family. And, and that got me intrigued by it. Uh -huh. I've always been a collector of lots of different things. Yeah, you mentioned earlier you've been to the Collector's Gallery, yes. uh, the shop that I uh, go to quite frequently. And uh, you're purchasing, purchasing what there? When I was a kid, I lived in that, I grew up in that neighborhood, so I would go there for Pokemon cards or, <laughs> you know, Beanie Babies and stuff, whatever was the trend of, uh -huh. you know, the seventh and eighth grade. Yeah. But, um... I haven't been there in a while. I don't haven't been to Illinois in quite a while, but yeah, I used to go there when I was a kid. Uh huh. That what a weird coincidence, and uh, that's that's cool, man. Hey, take a look at this big beauty here, 100 ounce Engelhard. But hey, look at these two little beauties below. These are T the Silver Stacker Channel Slabs, available at the Gold Depot in Griffith. When regarding silver, mm -hmm. you're pretty comfortable where you're at. Do you feel comfortable uh, sharing, not the volume, but like what the type of silver that you have in your stack? I mean, you're in this business, mm -hmm. and so uh, what, do you stack bars? Do you stack, um, you know, rounds? What, what is your preference? Um, well, when I first started off, it was whatever was closest to the spot that I could stack the most with, uh -huh. like most people go. But um, I myself, as I mentioned to you before, I am a huge fan of PAMP. Okay. Anything by Swiss Pamp, I am a huge fan of, whether it's silver, gold, fractional, large bars. That's just, when it has that name on it, it yeah. intrigues me. They're just really, really well made and, and well known. Okay. They hold a premium. Usually an ounce of silver, like a silver Pamp, is almost double the price of spot, no matter what. Really? Yeah, I mean, they just, these are going for about almost $44, $45 an ounce. Okay. Even today with silver being under 23 an ounce. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a big fan of Pamp. Um, I, anything fractional gold and then um, a lot of the stuff that I've been purchasing lately for not necessarily myself but stacking for my daughter's future uh -huh. I've been buying what would intrigue her okay. my daughter loves horses my daughter loves unicorns and you know different animals and stuff that she's learning about in school or even little Bible stories like the Noah's Ark pieces and stuff like that so I'm always stacking for her future and also giving her stuff that she thinks is pretty cool too uh, speaking of Bible stories, I see that uh, guitar behind you there. You, uh, yeah. you, you play in your church band, huh? Yes, I am a guitarist for the worship team at First Church in Hebron. Uh, very good. Um, I recently started playing guitar for them. I've been playing guitar for over 20 years. Uh -huh. That's my baby, Paul Reed Smith. Uh -huh. I'm going to be playing this weekend, uh -huh. um, both sermons for 9 and 10.30. And it's been just a huge, huge job. Uh, wave of positivity in my life for me and my family. That's awesome, man. I'm happy for you. And I'm a person of faith as well, as you know, maybe a different flavor, uh, but I'm a Christian just like you. And I'll tell you what, it's good to see young people and young families in the faith. And, you know, I don't really make it a point to talk too much about religion or politics on my channel, but uh, I'm happy for you. Thank you. It's, it's been nothing but positive for me and my family. I noticed something in your uh, case there mm -hmm. that I'm not real familiar with. And there are these discs. They almost look like a pancake or not quite as deep as a, a hockey puck. Yeah. But I, I've just started seeing these pop up. Uh, let us let me get my uh, viewers a little closer There's, view. The two different ones. Those are 10-ounce, uh, I call them hockey pucks. Okay. The 10-ounce hockey pucks, those are from the Silverback Precious Metals. Okay. I'm not 100% sure where they're out of. I know uh, Rich knows a little more about them than I do. I just re recently just got them in my store. Um, I think they call it the Rise, one of them is called the Rise of the Fed Building, but... Um, <laughs> They're they're uh, they're pretty neat pieces. Yeah, the um, artwork is interesting. And yeah, cool it, looking and different. Something new to add to your stack. Yeah, yeah, I think they're pretty cool. Uh -huh. I like getting new things. You know, when you when all you got are, are are buffalo Indian buffalo heads or silver eagles, it gets kind of boring. Sure. Hey, I see a little junk in your uh, display case there. Uh, what's junk silver going for today? And I think 
if I remember correctly, the spot is around 22 and a quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your jump going for? Uh, typically, we're going about 22 times face. Okay, gotcha. Yes. That's uh, if some places are going up to 24. Yeah. Um, depending on you know the amount you buy, 21 to 22 times face. Okay. And how about that collectible stuff that I see? Is is that popular or is that uh, how's that moving for you? Uh, hit or miss. Hit okay. or miss. It is really good stuff though. I I. I they do have a high premium on them. Um, they are from the New Zealand Mint. Mm -hmm. um, Disney pieces, Batman, Star Wars, uh, various... Um, People buy those for gifts mostly? Mostly gifts, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I mean, the average you're going to spend about 100 bucks or more per ounce of silver on them. But they are a currency from New Zealand and they are limited issue. Yeah. Um, they've only minted so many per year that they made them and they don't, they're not going to make them again. Yeah. So give it some time down the future, five, ten years, those pieces are going to increase in value due to rarity. Well, I would say as opposed to a toy that gets, you know, oh, yeah. a hundred dollar toy that gets played with for five minutes and forgotten about, at least uh, you have some value there that, that can uh, actually, uh, you know, gain appreciation over time. And, yep. Mm -hmm. And or even like I'm a big fan of Star Wars, you know. So the Han Solo piece is I, one of my favorites that have come in. The Han Solo frozen in carbonite. That's uh, graded at MS70. Probably one of the coolest pieces I think that's come in from the New Zealand stuff. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah, and it's antiqued and just has a really cool look to it. Yeah, that movie brings back great memories too. Yeah, Star Wars was seared into my brain as a kid by my dad. So yeah, it's something I hold dear. I'm looking forward to getting into the Obi-Wan now. Uh, I might binge watch that this weekend. Nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, hey, what else can you tell me about the shop? Uh, you've got a good selection. Let me just pan around this Sure. One. You've got a good selection of uh, jewelry there, uh, numismatics, uh, Morgan Dollars, and even some sports memorabilia in the back there. Mm -hmm. uh, how's that going? It, uh, it seems like uh, sports memorabilia has uh, has regained uh, some popularity that it maybe have lost a while back. It has more and more more and more of it's coming in to be you know sold to us over the counter. Uh -huh. um, I've been really focusing a lot on building the numismatic stuff. Um, okay. When I started here, there was some, but it was a little on the skimpy side. We had a lot more collectibles and memorabilia and toys than we yeah. did. Um, like silver dollars and stuff like that. So I've been do, doing a lot to increase that because you have a we're, specialty, like that some an area that you're an expert in when it comes to numismatics, or I'm still are learning, you learning myself learning about everything because it's. I mean, for goodness sakes, I can only imagine what walks in the door. Oh yeah, uh, a wide variety. Yeah. yeah, I'm still learning a lot about it myself. Uh, it took me a while to to what to look for when it came to key dates and. How to tell when the you know eyeball a great you know a grade of a coin whether the condition is near uh, mint state or not, uh -huh. and uh, also just recently started looking into VAMs, which is variable errors on Morgans and Peace dollars that can increase the value uh -huh. of the coins themselves. And you know, looking at a coin under a loop for hours on end, <laughs> looking for these tiny little variables uh -huh. um, gets a little um, time consuming and makes you a little cross-eyed, but. <laughs> Other than that, I used to be into jewelry. I used to make jewelry. Uh -huh. And so when jewelry comes in over the counter, whether it's scrap or something that needs to be resold or something like that, um, I have a bit of expertise in working with uh, precious metals in that aspect. Yeah, and I noticed uh, when I was setting up, a uh, lady was here selling some Tiffany jewelry. Mm -hmm. uh, what was that, with earrings? Or, yeah, it was uh, a set of uh, 18 karat gold Tiffany earrings. Okay, wow. So, so I, it must make it kind of fun to know that on any given day, mm -hmm. you put that, yeah, flip that open sign, anything can walk in the door. Oh, yeah. You'd be surprised. <laughs> yeah. You know, some of the things you're, people walk in with, as they say, you never know what's going to walk through that door. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to build inventory on the coin collecting myself. Uh -huh. um, you know, I've got, you know, when we started, I think all of our coins were in one case. And now I've got a case of just silver dollars and okay. just case of just half dollars. And yeah. I've been expanding that. So... Anybody who's looking to get into the numismatic collecting, there, you know, there's another store on the on the list to come check out. Very cool. Um, and uh, other than that, uh, we no 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 purchase is bit too big or too small for us. Whether okay. you want to sell me a gram of gold or you want to sell us a hundred ounces of gold, we will make it happen. Fantastic. Well, hey Mike, I really appreciate the time, and uh, this has been a really nice conversation and. I'm going to do a little shopping, so thanks a lot, buddy. No problem. Thank you.
Hey, a special shout out to my channel members who support my efforts to visit coin shops all over the country and do what I do. And thank you, the viewer, for watching. Now it's time to reveal what I purchased. I saw this. I laid eyes on it. I could not pass up this EPM Vintage Bar Eastern Precious Metals. I don't know a ton about it other than the name that I looked up on Google. So if any of you watching know about these bars, uh, please let me know. It feels great in the hand and it just has an amazing cool factor in my opinion. And uh, I paid $300 for it. So if you think about it, that was only like $2.50 or so over and above what like generics would have cost. I think I did pretty good. You guys let me know in the comments. And thanks again for watching.